in? Oh, hi. Come on in, yeah. Hey, what's that? Well, you said you wanted to talk about smoking. Oh, not that kind. You know, cigarettes. Well, that's exactly what this is. More than 13 gallons of smoke from a single pack of cigarettes. Seems like a lot. It is. So remember the size of this flask and how much smoke there's in it as we investigate smoking today. Now, Phil, you want to hold on to that as I sure. take it back here? Well, let's start at the beginning. Why do you think young people start smoking anyway? Why did you start? Well, I never have. Not with sports. I see. How about you, Julia? Well, I don't know. I suppose I started because people I know smoked. It was kind of the thing to do, I guess. Sort of like being part of the crowd, huh? Well, more or less. Did it make you feel more adult? Well, I never thought of it that way, but yes, I suppose so. More grown up. Well, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be more grown up. A lot of grown ups do smoke. Yes, but what did your parents say? Wait till you've grown up. Yeah, wait till you've grown up. That's what cigarette companies say, too. You see it all the time. Here, look at this. You see the screen over there? They show attractive adults doing what? Well, having fun, enjoying themselves. And aren't they showing you how much fun it is to smoke when you grow up? So the idea is, the sooner you smoke, the sooner you're grown up. Now, here's another one. It's doing the same thing. You'd expect cigarette companies to tell you smoking is pleasant. They want you to smoke. Well, it's not good business for them to say anything's wrong with smoking. Or for them to tell you what smoking does to you. And most people begin to smoke and keep on smoking because they don't think about what smoking does to them. But they should. The facts about smoking are easy to understand. See that goldfish over there? Hey, what's the goldfish gonna do, smoke? Well, yes, in a way. See, this is an aspirator here. And as water flows through it, it creates a partial vacuum right there. Would you light the cigarette, uh, Phil? Sure. Hey, air's coming in here. Well, follow the path of the air. Well, let's see, the air comes through here, down into the tube, down into the bottom where it's bubbling up through the water. Then I guess it just comes out through the tube, through the hose. To fill up the partial vacuum in the aspirator. Now, keep your eye on the fish. Notice he's swimming and breathing normally. Julia, you know how he gets oxygen, don't you? Through his gills. He gets it from the air that's dissolved in the water. Hey, he looks as though he's getting dizzy. You see, he's inhaling part of the smoke that's dissolved in the water. Hey, he's turning over. The sense of balance is all off. And to a degree, smoking has the same effect on you. You mean, like that fish? Well, hasn't smoking ever made you dizzy? Well, sure. So you see, the same toxic effect uh, smoking has on the fish this is the same thing that happens to you when you smoke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Julia, would you go over there and get us one of those mice, please? Do I have to? <laughs> oh, boy, I'll get it. You wouldn't mind holding this, would you? No. Well, now what do I do with them? Well, just hold them, because I wanted you and uh, Julia here to meet an important member of a team. What team? Well, the research team at Roswell Park Memorial Institute, for example. It's one of the foremost cancer research institutes in the country. One of the things researchers have done is paint mice with tars distilled from cigarette smoke. And what happens to the mice bears a very close relationship to what happens to the tissues of a smoker. A cancer grows in the irritated tissue after just a few weeks. It's very similar to lung cancer. The point is that experimental evidence has very definitely established a relationship between cigarette smoking and cancer. The mice die. Well, it's pretty obvious mice shouldn't take up smoking. But the mice didn't smoke. They painted the tires on them. Well, there's not so much difference. Here, I'll show you. Uh, Phil, you want to put the mouse back? Sure. And Julia, you come with me. You said you smoked. That's right.
Now, I want you to take in a full mouthful of smoke. Do not inhale, and then blow it through this tissue. This time, take in the same amount of smoke, inhale it into your lungs, and then blow it through this tissue. Do you see any difference? Well, the tissue with the inhaled smoke is a lot lighter. And where are all those tars? Well, I guess they're in my lungs. Well, with that much smoke and tar, is left in your respiratory tract after only one drag. Imagine what your lungs must look like when you smoke a pack. Remember those 13 gallons of smoke? Your lungs couldn't help but be painted with tars. Okay, mouse? Okay. Now, smoking affects your body in other ways, too. If this were a human being, what would this part be? Well, it's a pump. It must be the heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, this tube, Phil? Well, I guess that's the arteries, which takes the blood from the heart to the body. And this one? Well, that's probably the veins that takes the blood from the body back to the heart. What's that supposed to be? Well, that's a pressure gauge. Uh, you won't find one of those inside of you, but it will help you understand uh, how your blood pressure changes when you smoke. I'll turn it on. Uh, what does the pressure gauge say? Pressure is almost two. OK, that's normal for this system. Now, one of the first things that happens when you smoke is a constriction of your body's capillaries. What's the pressure read now? Well, it's, it's going up to eight. And that's what happens in a smoker's body. But what does the increased pressure mean? That the heart and the whole circulatory system has to work harder. Right. Now, you know how smoking uh, causes shortness of breath? Yes, it's happened to me sometimes. Well, the constriction of the capillaries and the shortness of breath are the immediate effects of smoking. You see now why serious athletes don't smoke? Sure, everyone tells you not to, but now it makes sense. Well, the things we've talked about so far are bad enough, but smoking has much more serious consequences. What would happen if something were to plug up or block off one of your heart's blood vessels? Well, no blood would flow. The patient would die. Of a heart attack. Now, doctors aren't sure how smoking contributes to heart attacks, but more smokers die of them than non-smokers. The rate of death from heart attacks in middle-aged men, for instance, is from 50 to 150 percent higher for smokers than non-smokers. But there's no definite proof that smoking causes heart attacks. No, but the extra deaths for smokers are real enough. What more proof do you need? Now let's talk about emphysema. Emphysema? What's that? Emphysema is a disease that causes the air sacs in your lungs to break down. What do the air sacs do? Aren't they where the oxygen you breathe is absorbed into the blood? Yes. This is a section of lung from a normal person. This is one from an emphysema patient. You see the difference? Yeah, the air sacs are bigger in that last one. They're broken down, and there isn't enough surface for normal oxygen exchange. In the advanced stages, the victim can hardly make it across the room. Because he can't get enough oxygen. Now, no one knows what causes emphysema, but we do know that smoking makes it much worse. Do either of you know what chronic bronchitis is? Well, chronic means you have it for a long time. And it's a disease of the bronchial tubes in here somewhere. It's a serious inflamed condition in which the victim feels as though his lungs were, uh, you know, burning up. He can't stop coughing. Let me read you something. This is from the Surgeon General's report. Cigarette smoking is the most important of the causes of chronic bronchitis in the United States and increases the risk of dying from chronic bronchitis. Gee, that's pretty straightforward. Of course, of all the diseases associated with smoking, the most serious is what? Cancer. Lung cancer. American Public Health Association says the way things are going, over a million young people in school today will die of lung cancer. That's a lot of people like us, isn't yeah, it? He said over a million. That's the entire population of over 2,000 American high schools. Come back over here to the projector. Do 
You remember this fellow. Let's see what goes on inside. Smoke has constantly irritated his lung tissue and cancer has developed. Cancer is an uncontrolled growth of cells. As the cancerous cells continue to multiply, they invade surrounding tissue and steal the nourishment from normal cells. Whenever cells become cancerous, they form malignant tumors. The tumor by itself is dangerous enough, but what's worse, the cancer cells are carried to other parts of the body where they form new tumors. Well, very briefly, that's what lung cancer is. What does it feel like if you get it? Well, at first, uh, nothing. There's nothing to see or feel. No symptoms? Well, not until it's well advanced. That's what's so insidious about cancer. The first symptoms are hoarseness and coughing. Ever hear a cancer victim cough? No? Well, here's a picture taken through a fluoroscope. By the time there's hoarseness and coughing, lung cancer is already well developed. But can it be cured? Oh, I don't think you'll like the odds. 95% of the people who get it die. Well, doesn't smoking do any good? Well, in the Surgeon General's report there, there's only one reference to the possible good that smoking can do, and here it is. The drive to use tobacco uh, has the same basis as other drug habits, and in a large fraction of the American population, appears to satisfy the total need of the individual for a psychological crutch. What that means is that smoking is a pacifier. Like one to keep a baby quiet. According to psychiatrists, smoking is a sign of psychological weakness. Besides, you've seen how smoking defaces tissue, that it's a major factor in such diseases as emphysema, uh, chronic bronchitis, heart failure. And unless things change, over a million young people in school today will die of lung cancer. Now that you've seen what it does to you, do you really think smoking's worth the price? <laughs>